The Pat Kenny Show on News Talk with Matter Private Network. During current restrictions, don't ignore your health concerns. Our expert team is ready to help. This week, 50 years ago, the most famous sports person in the world arrived in Dublin. Pele, the diamond of British uh, Brazilian football, played in Dalyman Park to a crowd of almost 30,000 people. But how was it that the Brazilian legend actually came to be in Dublin in the first place and what effect did his star power have on the city? Reporter Simon Tierney has been investigating and he joins me now. Good morning, Simon. Morning, Pat. Can you give us a little background to this historic sporting event? Well, Pat Pelly was already in the UK for a number of fixtures against British clubs during the winter of 1972. At this point, he was in his early 30s. He'd already won a staggering three World Cups, most recently two years previously in 1970. And his club, Santos, they sent him off to Europe to essentially, I suppose, capitalise on his popularity and milk him for everything that he was worth before, God forbid, he retired. Now, his first stop had been in Birmingham, facing off against Aston Villa. Nothing puts off that fabulous footballer Pelle, not even power cuts. And Aston Villa, the host team, have just bought for one game only this generator for £5,000. More than 54,000 fans turn out to see Aston Villa play against Pelle and his team Santos from Brazil. No score yet. Both teams look for that opening, that weakness in defence, which could lead to a goal. Pelly on the attack. With the time running out, Santos hoped to make this an even score at least. But this time, Pelly's on the losing side. Aston Villa 2, Santos 1. And they don't do commentaries like that anymore. <laughs> anyway, it was Aston Villa 2 and Santos 1. Uh, so, uh, what uh, happened then to get him to Dublin? I believe that uh, Drum Condra, drums as they used to be called, and bows had a, a role to play in getting him to Dalyman Park. Yes, exactly, Pat. The two Dublin clubs, they'd convinced Santos to come to Dublin after their games with Sheffield Wednesday and Villa earlier in the week. And the Irish examiner described it as quote-unquote, surely the costliest game ever staged in this country because Santos were guaranteed a take-home package, Pat, of £7,000, £7,200, rather, a lot of money in those days, of which just over a 1000 went exclusively to Pele, plus all hotel and air travel expenses included. The match itself was played against a combined 11 from both the from both Drumcondra and uh, Bose as well. So Pele arrived in Dublin and I can imagine, I mean, if you think of Muhammad Ali in uh, more recent times, I bet his arrival caused a stir. Huge fanfare, Pat. Chaos in Dublin airport. He was mobbed by the ground staff before he even got off the plane. Now, I've done a deep dive into the Irish newspaper archive and the Irish Post ran with a photo of the Black Pearl as they described him, being swamped by autograph hunters with the headline, King Pele Arrives. Um, The Post's reporter, he continued that Pele, whose English is restricted to a few broken sentences, immediately broke off from signing autographs and told me, hope good game. Irish people were so desperate to touch a bit of Pele's magic dust past that the Evening Herald reproduced his signature in a large printout saying for the thousands of fans who will be unable to get his autograph the Herald proudly reproduces his signature on the right. (laughs) <laughs> now, the cultural context within which this match uh, took place is kind of interesting. First of all, the troubles were at their worst in many ways, but Irish football was also undergoing a pretty fundamental transition. Well, absolutely. Bloody Sunday, of course, was still very fresh in the mind. The British Embassy on Merrion Square had recently been burned down in response to those events. Now, I managed to track down an Englishman by the name of... Gary Scothorn, who was deeply involved in the match, Pat, he had been signed with drums and he was selected as the goalkeeper for the combined 11 versus Santos on that historic day. When I went over to uh, Dublin, I I ended up working uh, for a glass company also at the same time as playing football. And it was the bad times. There were uh, car bombs going off and everything at that time. 
I had no problems whatsoever, Simon. Um, in fact, I was surprised at uh, the number of invites I would get to parties and uh, dinners. And I, I totally accepted and totally accepted the people who were inviting me. And uh, as I say, I, I had a great relationship with the uh, Irish uh, people at that time. Loved it. When, when I first went over to Ireland playing football, you, you, I, I could tell that you're probably not aware of it, but in those days, uh, the football had become live on the BBC. A lot of Irish fans had not deserted the Irish football, but were going over to uh, Manchester and Liverpool on the ferries to watch the teams on the weekend. So the uh, the attendances were in decline or had been in decline. And then for this match, I think there's 27, 30,000 there on the day. And I, fl I, I went over, I took my father over with me, we flew over. And the atmosphere was absolutely fantastic uh, because, as I say, I think the uh, local football fans had been deprived of this kind of football for several years since uh, people started travelling abroad to, to England. That was Gary Scothorne speaking. Uh, the goalie for the Drums Bohemians combined uh, team versus Santos in February of 1972. The match itself, by the way, Simon, described as a disappointment by some of the media. But for the players, I imagine it was a thrilling experience to be part of such a historic match. Well, indeed, the match reports generally from the time reported a lacklustre performance by the Brazilians, despite beating the home side ultimately. Um, the Irish Independent wrote that the fans had flocked to see the world's greatest footballer in action. They saw Pele, but they did not see him at his greatest. Now, to be fair to Santos, this was probably down to the gruelling schedule that their managers put them under on this tour, Pat. However, for Gary Scothorn in goal, it was a truly magnificent event in any player's career to face off against such a footballing icon. At that time, uh, Pelle was, I mean, I can speak to youngsters today, a lot of youngsters, and they're not even aware of him. But if you go back 50 years, Pelle was the man uh, on everyone's lip. I mean, 50 years ago, as you said, there was a lot of speculation in the uh, in the newspapers. Uh, some of the speculation I did hear, and one of the stories was that Pelle was going to score from the kickoff, which obviously didn't materialise. But then we gave a free kick away just outside our penalty area. And obviously the man to take it was Pelé. And he actually bent the ball round the wall. And luckily I read it, dived to my left and saved the ball. Fantastic uh, feeling to be, you know, standing behind a wall with uh, Pelé there uh, running up and uh, taking a shot. Fantastic. I, I met Pelé after the game in the dressing room. Um, I actually took uh, two programmes with me, of which I got Pelé and the rest of the team to sign, and they, they signed it very willingly. It was it was very, to be honest, Sam, it was very difficult. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but as soon as I think there was five minutes left of the game, they scored, made it 3-2, and Pelé, uh, Pelé actually ran off the pitch to avoid being um, chased by you know the, the supporters off the field. And then, obviously, when we got in the dressing room, it was a bit of a bedlam, really, chock-a-block. I had to wait two or three minutes to even get near the, near the man. He was the king of football at the time. He, all right, it was the end of his career, but it, it was like someone playing in the FA Cup this week against Lionel Messi or Mar uh, Ron Ronaldo. That was the epitome of who he could really play against in those days. It was just a proud moment. And that's Gary Scothorn, who was in goal for that uh, match, the combined drums bows team playing against Santos 50 years ago this week at Daily Mount Park. And that report compiled by Simon Tierney. Music.